So this is just going to be a quick overview of sensitivity analysis. Um, sensitivity analysis just helps us see how to further optimize our operations or to see the effects of other changes in our linear programming model. Um, there are a few definitions we'll come back to, but um, just to go over them real quick, there's slack, which is the amount of something that we could have used or produced but didn't. Surplus, which is the amount of resource uh, or production that exceeded the minimum. The allowable increase or decrease, which is the amount we can increase or decrease a certain item without a change in the shadow price. And then there's the shadow price, which is the amount uh, of change in the total of the optimal solution for every unit change in this item. These are all numbers that show up on our reports that we get from Excel Solver. So let's just jump into that real quick and take a look. So this is our um, Puckered Lips lemonade stand that we solved in the previous video. And we have this total profit of 25. And if we look at things here, we look that we can see that right here, oh, let's do this real quick. So you can see that right here, and that does not want to, why does that not work? There we go. Okay. So we have the, these cups of flour right here. We're using far less than the number we have. Uh, same thing with the cups of sugar, right? And then um, we're producing more than the minimum uh, that we have of uh, the glass of lemonade. So these are things that in our solution um, we either have an excess of resources that we didn't use. So that is our slack. These first two are our slack. So um, this cups of sugar and cups of flour, those are slack. So and this here is a surplus. Um, we'll see the, not the actual numbers in the report, but you can just uh, read it yourself, really, if you look here. Um, so if you look here at this, we've got 13 cups of sugar that we're actually using, um, but we have 20, so the slack here is 7 slack. Um, same here with the cups of flour. Using three, we had 20. So that is 17 slack. So, you know, you may not actually want your factory to be hanging around with all these extra things. So the sensitivity analysis really helps you see how you can change some of these things without um, either affecting your optimal solution or possibly increasing or further minimizing, depending on what you're trying to do with your uh, your objective function here, the solution to it. Um, and so let's just kind of jump into the reports that Excel produces for us. So this first report that Excel produces is called the answer report. And um, you see here, it's just reporting this is our total profit. This is the value we started out with before Excel solved it. So you can just pretty much ignore these unless you're really interested in that because you probably already know what you started out with. Um, and then here's your final number of glasses of lemonade and number of cookies. Uh, you can see here I did not actually put the integer constraint, which I should have. But um, so let's just look at some of the things down here. So we have a list here. Here's the actual values of the things we used or produced. These are the cells that tell us what our constraints were. Um, so these are all less than or equal to here, and this is greater than or equal to here. And then a list of whether things are binding or not binding, and slack. Now this really should be labeled slack slash surplus or preferably actually separate them out into separate columns. But um, so if you look here, we have the um, these ones that are binding, where we actually, with our optimal solution, we're actually intersecting with 
the constraint, so we're using everything. Uh, so we used all of our lemons, and we used all of our tablespoons of butter, and then we have um, a number of, then we have our non-binding constraints, um, where we actually have a slack or a surplus. So we have, again, as we mentioned before, we've got the um, slack, sorry, yeah, the slack of seven cups of sugar and 17 cups of flour, and the surplus of 20 glasses of lemonade because we said we wanted to produce a minimum of 20 glasses, but we actually produced 40. So that's your overview. Then you have another report, which is your sensitivity report. This sensitivity report, it tells you what things you can change um, and still maintain your current shadow, shadow price so you can actually predict how your optimal solution will change. So um, because we didn't actually put any constraints on what the prices of things could be, you'll notice that the, the allowable increase here, let's see, did that again, let's see, the allowable increase here on these variable cells, um, are we can actually increase the coefficients, which are the prices of the glass of lemonade and the glass of cookie, I mean the number of cookies, I mean, each cookie, you can increase those infinitely. That's what this i plus three um, really means. Um, but really, that's just because we've got an artificial situation here where the there's no constraint on how many we can produce. Everybody's just going to buy everything we produce, no matter the price. So, um, and sorry, these are not price. These are actually the profit, but you could increase the price and thereby increase the profit. Anyway, um, and you can also zero them out, and it doesn't affect um, the optimal solution in this case. And so let's just look at our constraints here. So we have the shadow price right here, the actual constraint, the final value on the constraint, the allowable increase, and then the allowable decrease. So let's just look at a couple things. So if you look at this, we have an allowable decrease on these two. These were our slack, remember. We can decrease those by 7 and 17, still retain our um, the... Uh, the same amount of profit. Um, so that's interesting there. Um, you can also look at your number of glasses of lemonade. You could increase this up to 20 before the optimal solution had, uh, up 20 more before the optimal solution had to change. Um, and you could decrease it to zero if you wanted. That's what this is saying. Um, and you, there's really no limit on the amount of sugar and flour that you could add, but really we don't want to keep those around. We want to probably free up the space in our warehouse. Um, but let's say we wanted to actually increase our profit. Where we can see that is in our shadow prices. So what the shadow prices are telling us here is that if within this range of increase and decrease, for every unit that we increase our shadow, uh, our uh, that we increase our um, the amount that we our constraint that we can use. So if we had more um, tablespoons of butter, so if we increased uh, tablespoons of butter by one, that results in an increase in the profit by 50 cents. Now, that doesn't mean that the optimal solution will be the same. It actually changes the optimal solution, but it it doesn't um, go to... It, it, the shadow price remains the same within this range. So we could increase up to 70 tablespoons of butter and increase our profit 70 times 50 cents and so 
So $35, we could get a $35 increase just by um, increasing our tablespoons of butter up another 70 units. Um, and same thing here with lemons. If we purchased 14 more lemons, if we had 14 more lemons, um, for each additional lemon, we would make 50 cents more. So we could make another $7 just by increasing the number of lemons that we have. So that is a quick overview of the sensitivity report and the answer report and how to interpret them with the shadow price um, and the allowable increase and decrease.